Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps you're visiting with us. We want to extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you will be blessed by what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray for our president and our nation at this time. We want to continue to pray for our local community and we want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request right now. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you, Father, for all of your blessings and your presence that is with us. Father, we want to continue to pray for our president and our nation during these troubling times. Father, we also pray for our, pray for our community that you will open up great doors of evangelism and an opportunity to witness. And Father, I pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out divine favor upon every person and to every home. We ask it in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. We're gonna do something a little bit different here this morning. Uh, several months ago in one of our morning devotions, we did a lesson on voices, on voices. We felt that that was so important that we wanted to bring that to you afresh and again this morning. So please stay tuned and be blessed. God bless you. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. I've got some important things I wanna share with us here this morning. I wanna draw your attention to the book of John, chapter number 10, begin reading in verse number one, Jesus speaking, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, almost immediately, we are being instructed that there is a legitimate, there is a honored, legitimate, known way of entering into the flock. And then there is another way of accessing the sheep. And that would be to come in from the side over the fence or to come in through the back, a way that escapes the notice of leadership. Because these sheep folds were erected in the fields that in the evening time, they would gather all the sheep together to come into the corral and they would be in a place of safety from the danger of wolves, coyotes, and other predators. Verse number three is really what we wanna talk about. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. I wanna to talk to us for a few moments about voices, voices. There are a lot of voices in the world. Um, First Corinthians chapter number 14 says that there are many voices in the world. And people are hearing voices in the 21st century. In fact, you can see the evidence of this all over our culture. In previous days, there's been atrocities and many horrible things have taken place. And people under cross-examination have said, I listened to a voice or I heard a voice or the devil told me to do this. The spirit world, the invisible world, is, is looking for an audience. They're looking for an ear. They're looking for attendance of human beings. And so it's careful that we understand that there is a danger in hearing voices. In our scripture here in John chapter number 10, Jesus is describing a particular scenario in which there is an enclosure of safety for the sheep in the nighttime. 
It's a time of protection. It is a time, it is a place of safety. And it is a place of familiarity because they understand that the porter is there. The porter understands the voice that opens up the sheep gate and the sheep know the voice of the porter. This is important because there is a level of familiarity there. There is a level of established trust in the voice of the porter. At a time where predators are roaming about, in a time of darkness, in a time in the night, there is familiarity and calm and peace and safety in the enclosure with the porter. I really appreciate such things that have been furnished to us here in the last, last several years, places like Holy Ghost Radio, other outlets, uh, even some forms of social media, and in a very strict sense, even things on YouTube where you can watch uh, and hear apostolic preaching, Holy Ghost Radio, which is 24 seven, which is one God, Jesus name, apostolic preaching all the time. We thank God for this, that there can be this type of a source of strength 24 seven. I have noticed over the last 30 days that there have been um, almost a proliferation because of the lack of gathering. Because of this pandemic, there's been restrictions placed upon the church that of course there are more people that are resorting to using electronic technology uh, to transmit their church services and the use of social media. Let us be careful and let us use caution at this time that there are more voices that are out there than ever before. One of the greatest safeguards that I know of is that we can check with our porter to make sure that the voices that we are hearing are approved and are right and good. Let me share another scripture with you to show you the relevance and the importance of this. Here we have John the Revelator on Patmos that is getting a personal visitation from Jesus Christ. And Jesus says this, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And so here is God's man, John the Revelator, having a personal visitation from Jesus Christ, receiving an absolute word from God to give to the seven churches. John does not use YouTube. John does not use social media. John does not bypass the porter. John, in his addressing the seven churches, says this, unto the angel of the church at Ephesus, unto the angel of the church at Smyrna, unto the angel of the church of Pergamos, and unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, and unto the angel of the church in Sardis, and unto the angel of the church in Philadelphia, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. Virtually every theologian, biblical commentator, and scholars over the last 2,000 years are all in agreement that the angel of the church is the pastor of those local congregations. Here is John the Revelator receiving a word from God. He could have easily, with his authority, even after leaving Patmos, we know that he visited Ephesus, and yet he still did not bypass the chain of godly command of localized spiritual authority. He went through those local pastors. I think it's right and proper for those that are sending out emails about maybe a video or a message or something that they feel like God has spoken to them. I think it's good that we check with local pastors, that we make sure that we're going through the right spiritual chain of command to communicate to God's people. I love preaching, I love godly teaching, I love hearing a godly message, 
And I think it should be that way because there are messages to the body in general. However, I've noticed that there is a proliferation of the usage of technology to get a message or an agenda or to bypass localized spiritual authority. If you remember in this church, I appreciate it when people ask me, they say, Pastor, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I think that's good and proper. In fact, I believe that John the Revelator, understanding I have a message of God, but I also recognize that God put into the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I think it's the will of God to go through God's men. Thank you, God bless you, and thank you for joining us.